reptiles escaping, it's a lot more common than you think. Whether you're a guy like me that owns hundreds upon hundreds of geckos, or you're just a hobbyist with just a few, the fact of the matter is, more likely than not, through that animal's life cycle, it's probably gonna end up getting out at least once in its life. So I wanted to take today and give you guys some tips and tricks on how to help find your missing reptile when it does escape. And Excuse you. And if you're like me and happen to have a gecko that's been missing for about a week or longer, how to help rehabilitate that animal and get it back to thriving like it was. Stick around while we go over those tips and tricks that may just end up saving your gecko's life. Let's get into it. First tip to get into is going to be probably one of the biggest one, and that's going to be don't panic. Now, while this might not be the case for some reptiles, the majority of them are going to be hardy. Remember, reptiles are a hardy species of animals and can go a pretty good amount of time before you get into that red danger zone. Just because your animal got out for maybe an hour, a couple of hours, or a couple of days, it's no need to panic. It's no need to think a couple of hours after your animal got loose, then it's a death sentence for it. The fact of the matter is, these guys can survive some pretty hardy temperatures and going without food or water for a prolonged period of time. So in my years and years of keeping and breeding reptiles, we, we've had a handful get out through the years, and the worst thing you can do is start panicking and freaking out and thinking like, you gotta find this ammo right now, it has to happen right now. Most of the time, you're not gonna find it when you're looking for it, and just the worst thing, it, you know, the animal's gone, there's no need to stress about it, it happens, the only thing we can focus on is finding it instead of freaking out about it. Moving on, let's get into the second tip at hand, and that's going to be number two, seal off any exits. If you happen to keep your reptiles in an own designated reptile room, a bedroom, or you're like me and this will be a little harder, keeping them in a basement, the fact of the matter is you wanna make sure to condense how far that animal can go as much as possible, so instead of having to look through your entire house or for me the entire length of this basement seal off that exit with the size of what you're looking for as little as possible so instead of going through this entire basement trying to find them i just have to look in this specific part of the room because i know he can't get out it still is useful when this does happen it can still be the risk like if the door is open and then you find the gecko missing it could end up getting out or already been out it's a little bit more of a precautionary thing i always keep my doors closed whether it was in a room whether it was in a building whether it is in a basement i always make sure to keep again that list of exits as close as possible so in the event that an animal does get out I don't have to look that far for it. Moving on to the last most helpful tip I have if you guys end up losing a gecko and that is going to be tip number four looking for the animal when it is most likely going to be awake. Personal experience over here the animals I've usually lost are going to be a couple of crested geckos and a toke once or twice has gotten out. Now these animals are nocturnal or if you want to be more specific surpuscular but they're out at night most of the time so when we're talking about looking for a gecko that potentially has escaped, you're gonna have a lot more of a tough time looking at it during the day because that animal, like just like in its enclosure, is gonna find a nice spot to sleep until it's time to wake up. Or instead, if you're looking for it, say, at night, this is gonna be when the animal's most active, so it's more likely gonna be out and about walking around versus finding a tight niche little corner in God knows how big of an area it is that you have to find. For me, I have had the biggest success doing it this way. I'll usually turn the lights off a couple of hours early, so usually the lights go off here around like like 10 and then I come down at like somewhere around 11 to midnight start working on everything and then all the lights turn off and it's good for the day I'll do everything around 10 o'clock I'll turn it off wait a couple of hours so, so the animal knows it is nighttime so start being active and then somewhere around that midnight to 1 a.m. in the morning you're gonna have to stay up late if you want to find the gecko at least if you're in my case I'm coming gonna come down here with a flashlight and start looking around nine times out of ten I'll find him in either the first or second night it's a great way to do it because they're more likely like I mentioned they're gonna be up climbing on these enclosures climbing around the wall instead of just being in that nice little nook and cranny they can sleep for the rest of the day until it's time for them to wake up. And then moving on, let's start talking about what the worst case scenario can be. Let's say it hasn't just been a couple of hours, a day or two, or a couple of days that that animal get out. Let's say this animal's been out for a week to a couple of weeks and now you finally found the animal but it's in a little bit of a rough state. So I wanted to go over what to do to rehabilitate that animal to make sure that it continues to thrive instead of crashing. Real quick before we get on with this video, I just want to take a few seconds to talk about the Patreon page. Now over on the Dakota Blue Exotics Patreon page, we have some awesome behind the scenes bonus content that I don't show anywhere else and some great perks as well. One of those perks I'm very excited to talk about, I actually took a lot of inspiration from Flawless Crested Geckos, and that membership is going to be the DBCB Credit Program. I absolutely love the credit program, I'll kind of explain how it works. Pretty much for each dollar that is pledged for that membership goes into a credit account that's personalized for 
for you. For instance, let's say you've been with the credit program for 10 months, which means you have $400 in credit. So if there's an animal you want for me that is $400, you can actually use that credit instead of money, which means you basically get the animal for free at that point. I mean, I guess if we're like using girl math, right? Not to mention there are some fantastic perks on top of that credit program already. That's gonna be some discounted percentages off the animals, flat rate shipping. We have some great educational chat boards where we discuss how to build your own gecko reptile room, how to build a gecko breeding business, and how to build a reptile social media. If you wanna grow yours, how to start one out the right way, everything that goes into that. Whether you guys are looking to up your knowledge about geckos, get some awesome behind the scenes bonus content, be part of an awesome tight niche community, or maybe you guys just wanna see the animals that I have for sale first before anyone else gets to see them, then Patreon's gonna be the perfect place for you. That's something that might interest you guys. I have the link right down in the description that'll take you right to our Patreon page where you can sign up. Thank you guys so much. All right, let's get back into the video. First most important thing to do is going to be rehydrating that animal. Food is not gonna be as important as getting water into the animal. Remember, just like humans, we can go like, I don't know, 30 days without food. We can't go more than a week without water. Water is gonna be the most important thing and this is what I do to make sure the animal is gonna be hydrated. Put that animal inside a smaller deli cup to soak. I usually do that for about an hour. I'm gonna put a little bit of warm water in there. Not so warm that it hurts your hand and it risks burning the gecko, but you don't want it to be too lukewarm because remember the gecko is gonna be in there for a little bit and depending how warm your room is or how cold your room is, that temperature water is gonna spike down going lower and lower into cold water. So I like it to be pretty on the warm side, just not enough to actually like burn yourself. What this is gonna do is two things specifically. Number one, it's going to create a nice 100% human enclosure, well micro enclosure because it's just in a little deli cup right now to get that humidity going for that gecko where it's been for the past, you know, a couple of weeks in an area that's like 30% humidity. And number two, it's gonna pretty much force that animal to hydrate. You can't lead the horse to water any more than placing the gecko inside of a cup filled with water. That, that's pretty much as easy as it's gonna get. It's gonna be the easiest way to get your gecko to start drinking again and getting that hydration back into the animal. We have water back in the animal, we're getting it hydrated. The next step is gonna get that weight back on. Obviously that animal not getting anything to eat for a week, a couple of weeks, it's gonna cause the animal to lose weight and we wanna put that weight back on. Instead, what most people are gonna probably do is put the animal back in its enclosure. If we're talking a crested gecko for this example, it's going to be a 58 quart bin. That's a pretty big space where an animal's gonna to have to expend more calories and more energy going back up to where it's food where it usually is. In the case of this matter, what we want to do is make sure the animal gets as much energy, as much size, getting as much food back in as possible until it is good to go again. Personally for me, I'm gonna actually gonna put that animal in a temporary enclosure. What I usually use is a shoebox bin and I'll have two dishes, one filled with food, one filled with water, a little bit of a humid hide, and that's about it. That animal can just focus on having a microclimate once again, having that proper humidity, all those proper husbandry needs that it gets. Inside of a smaller space, it does not have to expand as much energy and calories finding its food because the food is gonna be right there. It seemed like a small enclosure for some people. The two things you gotta keep in mind is, number one, this is gonna be the best thing for the animal to rehabilitate and get it back going to that thriving status. And number two, it's not forever. It's actually not for very long. Depending on the severity of your case, which really depends on how long the gecko has been gone depends on how long it's gonna be in that temporary enclosure. That can range anywhere from just a couple of days, you know, one or two feedings in there to maybe a week or two. But at the end of the day, it's really not a long amount of time. That is pretty much what you have to do. It's a very easy process in my opinion. Pretty much at that point, once you wait again, whatever that time period is, three days a week to two weeks, you pretty much just wanna look for those physical differences. Does the skin look still look dehydrated? Is it like sagging and kind of like pinch it? Um, does the animal still look physically skinny? Does it look like it's still you know, exposed ribs, uh, hips, things of that nature. Once that animal looks a lot better, it can just go back in that enclosure and you're good to go. If this video can help some people, I know, especially personal experience, how just like physically anxiety ridden it is for an animal to get out of its enclosure. Just remember folks, don't panic, follow these tips. If you do end up finding your animal, when you end up finding your animal and you'll be a-okay and your animal is going to make it with no issue. If that wasn't enough Crested Gecko content for you boys and girls, I highly suggest this video right here, or maybe you guys wanna check out the playlist I have of like the 50 plus Crested Gecko videos that I have on YouTube. As always, thank you so much for taking the time of your day to follow us over here at Dakota Blue Exotics. I will see you guys next time, but until then, goodbye.